I think every country, and even the world of course, has certain dates in their history that are synonymous with where were you when. Mm -hmm. um, from what we've learned through this channel in the UK, I think those dates would, and the world, would be 9-11, right? Mm -hmm. And when Princess Diana died. Yes. And um, here in the US, of course, 9-11 mm -hmm. and 11-22-63, the day John F. Kennedy was assassinated. And this Wednesday marks that 60 year of that day. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I have, since a child, have read books on JFK's life. And everything and anything <sighs> that has been on TV or movie, like you said, books, anything in the papers, you're definitely reading it. You have a very deep desire to learn and to get all the knowledge you can about it. Yeah, I've always had an obsession, I guess, if you will, mm -hmm. on the Kennedys. And, um, you know, the Kennedys have always been our royal family. That's kind of our royal family. And the Kennedys, in a way, do mirror you know, those of the, the royal family yeah. in Britain in some ways, in some ways, in cursed ways. True. Either way, um, today's episode is in honor of most likely the greatest president in the United States history, John F. Kennedy Jr. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we're going to take a look at a video in a moment. Um, but before we do that, uh, we have another video we put together for you mm -hmm. that we'd like to share. And um, this video is something that is incredibly ingrained in the brains of all Americans. Um, yes. Now, Debbie and I, neither of us were alive when JFK was and when he was assassinated. Mm -hmm. But our parents and our grandparents and every family member. Yes. And like you said, everybody knows where they were. Where they were, yeah. And um, prior to 9-11, that was the date mm -hmm. that everyone talked about. Where were you when yes. JFK yes. was assassinated? Um, so having talked with a couple friends today from the UK, and talking to them about Walter Cronkite and him going on the air for the news, mm -hmm. which is one of the most watched news moments in the history of our country. Mm -hmm. um, I thought it would be well known in others too. And these friends had never seen this before. It's totally surprising to us. Yeah. We thought that this was something that was probably shown in other countries, mm -hmm. but you please let us know in the comments if it is what we're about to show you. We'll watch it with you. Mm -hmm. It's a hard watch, but um, it's kind of just a short little two minute timeline of how the day unfolded on the news. And it changed a lot, really a lot of how the news was done. Yes. Um, a lot of running around and things like that. But um, we're not here for conspiracy theories today and stuff like that. We're here just to, to learn. Now, the actual video we'll be reacting to is Mark Felton. Mm -hmm. And um, this was sent over by somebody, and I'm sorry, I don't remember who it was. It's been a little while ago now. It is called Visit America Without Leaving Britain, the JFK Memorial. Like Debbie said, I've read about everything there is, yeah. and I've never heard of this. We sure haven't. It goes on to say, in a corner of England is a slice of U.S. territory. That's right. A part of Britain is owned by the United States, and you can visit it without a passport or visa. And it's all to do with slain President John F. Kennedy. Hmm. Very interesting. I didn't know we owned actual property. I'm curious if that's actually true or not. but. US. Um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to watch the first clip with you guys. Like we said, it's um, a short timeline um, from Walter Cronkite and a couple mm -hmm. other folks. Um, the most synonymous news, breaking news moment in U.S. history, yes. honestly. The most played. Mm -hmm. I've already seen it 35 times this week alone. Yes. Um, and do let us know in the comments if it's something you've seen before. So um, we'll go through that and then we'll check out the Mark Felton video and learn about this memorial in the U.S. on U.S. soil that we've never heard about. Here is a bulletin from CBS News. In Dallas, Texas, three shots were fired at President Kennedy's motorcade in downtown Dallas. This is Walter Cronkite in our newsroom in New York City. There has been an attempt, as perhaps you know now, on the life of President Kennedy. He was wounded in an automobile driving from Dallas Airport into downtown Dallas, along with Governor Connolly of Texas. They've been taken to Parkland Hospital there, where their condition is as yet unknown. We have just learned, however, ever that Father Huber, one of the two priests called into the room, has administered the last sacrament of the church to President Kennedy. From Dallas, Texas, the flash, apparently official, President Kennedy died at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time, 2 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, some 38 minutes ago. 
that moment right there, that is the most watched. It is. And the most shown. Mm -hmm. um, Walter Cronkite, if you don't know, and I'm not trying to be condescending, if you don't know, right. was the most respected journalist mm -hmm. um, over here. I mean, there's still awards. Very well known. Yeah, awards given out per his standards. Mm -hmm. And to see him visibly choked up. Yes. That this, the whole nation just lost it, you know? Of course. It's like seeing the queen if she was crying over something, you know? It's like, wait, mm -hmm. what? <laughs> so um, that little clip right there, uh, I've probably seen that more than anything else in the news in my yeah. life on like repeat. Yeah. Like I, I, and it just, every time I see it and just that expression right there of, mm -hmm. you know, he's thinking, holy. God. Even though he's composed, you can tell he's. He's not. Know, yeah, he's not. Definitely affected by yeah. the news that he just read himself. Absolutely. And again, we want to know if you've seen this, please, from other countries, let us know if you've seen this clip. Mm -hmm. The bulletin is that our correspondent uh, in Dallas, Dan Rather, <coughs> reports that the Dallas police have arrested a 30-year-old man who was found with a weapon in his possession. Can you tell me what your first reaction was, ma'am, when, when you... tragedy that ever happened to this country since President Lincoln. Ma'am? <laughs> People will remember today as a date to date things in their lives from in the same way that they did in the case of President Roosevelt. They say, where were you when President Roosevelt died? They will say the same thing about where were you when you first heard the news of President Kennedy's assassination. This is a scene at Andrews Air Force Base for the casket of carrying the body of President Kennedy is being transferred to an ambulance. Behind it come Mrs. Kennedy and Robert Kennedy. Here is the suspect. Will we roll it, please? Did you shoot the president? I didn't shoot anybody, no, sir. You just heard uh, Oswald, who said he did not shoot anybody. As this day draws to a close, here is a brief summary of its events, past and to follow. Upon today's assassination of President Kennedy, Lyndon B. Johnson became the new president of the United States. This is Harry Reasoner. Good night. This was a CBS News special report. Again, let us know if you have seen any of that footage before. We're just interest, interested to know for ourselves. It doesn't matter how many times I see it. Oh, yeah. I mean, I've seen it more than I can count. It definitely gets you in the heart. Yeah, I mean, it just oh, it takes me off, too. It's like, mm -hmm. what would have been? You know, what right. could have been? We'll never know. No. Um, definitely a, a day that changed. The wor it changed the, the world. world. It wasn't I mean, just this country. Yeah, um, He was a different type of person, different type of president. So this video, um, I'm very interested and curious about this. So uh, what the heck? Um, what are we, we going to see? And I, I don't know how I don't know this. How to visit the U.S. without leaving Britain? I've never heard of the JFK Memorial over there. Now, there's a lot of, we know, connections with JFK in the U.K. Of course, his dad mm -hmm. and his sister being buried there. Um, different things as well. but. Um, this I don't know. So it's time to learn. You got that? Thank you. Yeah. I'm intrigued. If I was to tell you that you can visit the United States without leaving England, you might think that I'm not quite the full shilling. I but it's perfectly true. If you step through this wooden gate, deep in the English countryside, you magically enter sovereign American territory. And you don't need a passport or a visa to do so, or to be questioned by immigration officials. Legally, once through the gate, you are on US soil. Seriously? The reason for this interesting little anomaly is John F. Kennedy. On the 22nd of November 1963, President Kennedy was brutally and publicly slain in Dealey Plaza, Dallas, Texas. With Kennedy died the hopes and dreams of not only many Americans, but of many people all over the world. Well said. Mm. Kennedy was a much adored, revered and respected international statesman who appeared to have been doing much to change America and the world for the better. Absolutely. But was cut down in the prime of his life. Freedom of information is a fundamental human right and the touchstone of all the freedoms to which the United Nations is consecrated. We welcome the view of others. We seek a free flow of information across national boundaries and oceans, across iron curtains and stone walls. We are not afraid to entrust the American people with unpleasant facts, foreign ideas, 
alien philosophies, and competitive values. For a nation that is afraid to let its people judge the truth and falsehood in an open market is a nation that is afraid of its people. Hmm. Many people believe that Kennedy's assassination marked a sea change in American politics, and that if he and his brother, Robert F. Kennedy, who was also cruelly assassinated in 1968 when he was running for president, if both had lived, America and the world might today be very different places. It would. Who knows? What we do know is JFK's death caused a massive outpouring of grief and sorrow worldwide, the likes of which haven't been seen since, and also a very strong desire by many countries to honor his memory and his legacy. And that just right there, that just speaks to what a man he was. Yes. You know, how many other places are going to want to even care mm -hmm. and do something? And, and I just think that is beautiful. Yes. And um, it makes me feel a lot of pride, you know? It does. Even though, again, I wasn't alive when he was president. But, you know, my grandparents had books on him when I was a little kid. Mm -hmm. And I grabbed them very early on in my life. I learned about his World War II days and... Um, all the different stuff with his family, and I don't always agree with things, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm gonna keep moving it because it needs to be where it belongs, <laughs> that way. Um, but uh, yeah, that's a beautiful thing, a sentiment from other countries, and it means a lot. It definitely does. You know? <clears throat> Britain was, of course, no exception. In 1965, Her Late Majesty Queen Elizabeth II gifted a symbolic one acre of English woodland to the United States to erect upon it a permanent memorial to Kennedy's memory that would stand forever upon U.S. soil as a beacon of free speech, democracy, and hope. Wow. The site chosen... What an honor. I'm not going to cry. From You're crying. Queen Elizabeth to do that, to, to leave an entire acre. That doesn't surprise me that of all people, she would be the one that does that, it. That's an very acre. true. Very true. We don't even have an acre. But I'm just saying, like, that's, it may be small to some, but that's, that's just a huge, wow. It's that's a small sediment, but huge, huge meaning. Yeah, let's, I need to know more. It's a beacon it. of free speech, democracy, and hope. Mm. The site chosen for the memorial was incredibly symbolic. Runnymede in the English county of Surrey, just west of London. Okay. Runnymede is the place where, in 1215, King John reluctantly agreed to the Magna Carta, or Great Charter, paving the way for the idea that kings should have some limitations placed upon their powers, and also be guided by a council of wise men, the latter eventually morphing over hundreds of years into a parliament, and eventually something called representative democracy. The full name of this agreement from 1215 was Magna Carta Libertatum, or Great Charter of Freedoms, the freedoms of the individual against royal power. That's why she chose... I, that is I, no, amazing. That is so cool. I had no idea, and I'm so glad that we're learning this. This is nice. This is nice yes. to hear this. That is really, really... Um, I don't have the right word for it. Dang it, I hate that when my brain's like... <laughs> there's a word I had. <laughs> it's but very it's, honorable. It's, it's, it's incredible. Yes. I love this. Charter of Freedoms. The freedoms of the individual against royal power. In the beginning, these freedoms only applied to the barons who forced the Magna Carta on King John. We need to learn but about over that hundreds more. of years would develop into individual freedoms and rights for all. The Magna Carta is said to have laid the foundations of democracy in the Western world mm -hmm. and would go on to heavily influence the American colonists and the formation of the U.S. Constitution. Mm -hmm. As famous English judge, Lord Denning described the Magna Carta. It is, quote, the greatest constitutional document of all times, huh. the foundation of the freedom of the individual against the arbitrary authority of the despot, end quote. Interesting. So before so, he goes on, let us know if you'd like us to do a video on that, because, I mean, I know we, we've talked about that in school. We learned about it in school. Yeah. When I was too young. I don't remember that. Yeah, um, exactly. I don't remember. <laughs> um, but let us know. And again, I just think that is so incredible. And, and so meaningful for her to pick a location right yes, there. Yes, exactly. It says a lot. It's not just... Queen Elizabeth, though, you know, she just didn't just do stuff to just do stuff. She did it in a way that was so thought-provoking and also so just um, correct. Uh-huh. You know? Yeah. There's a lot of thought to it. Yeah, you could tell that she, that there was thought behind it. Absolutely. Not just, oh, here's a piece of land. Right. 
So I, I'm, I'm absolutely, this is awesome, but I want to know more. No wonder then that the JFK Memorial was placed on land gifted by Britain to America, next to where the Magna Carta was agreed to in 1215. Wow. Now, some people are under the misguided notion that the US acre of England at Runnymede is not, in fact, the only US soil in Britain today. What about US air bases, of which there are no, several today not. dotted around southern, eastern, and central England? Uh -uh. In fact, all of the US bases remain British territory, and in fact belong to the Royal Air Force and are simply loaned to the US I for their use, part. a hang-up from mm. World War II. Right. That's why all US bases in Britain carry the prefix RAF. For example, RAF Mildenhall and RAF Lakenheath, both of these not too far from where I live. Okay. The bases come under US military law and rules, but remain part of Britain. Okay, but what about the US Embassy? <laughs> <laughs> right? Wouldn't that be the other U.S. soil? Maybe. I, right? I would think, but I don't know. Maybe he will tell us. I knew the air, like the air bases weren't though, because that's a loaned mm -hmm. out, the loaned out thing, like you said. But wouldn't the U.S. embassy be? I would think so, but uh -huh. I don't know. <laughs> the bases come under U.S. military law and rules, but remain part of Britain. Okay, but what about the U.S. Embassy in London, or Sorry. the U.S. Consulates around Britain? They must be U.S. soil, surely? Right? No, not according to both English law and the U.S. Congress. Oh. The Embassy or Consulate is the territory of the host nation, in this case Britain. But okay. the Embassy or Consulate represents a sovereign state, in this case the United States, and agreed international diplomatic rules mean that no one can enter the Embassy or Consulate without permission. Okay. An attack on an embassy is designated as an attack on the country it represents. That's so the I land beneath the US Embassy in London remains part of the UK. Okay, fair. Mm. The JFK Memorial, therefore, at Runnymede is uniquely different from a US diplomatic post or a military base, because the land it stands upon has been gifted in perpetuity to the United States, huh. becoming its sovereign territory. The JFK Memorial is approached up a steep path through a woodland. The pathway can- I need a minute. <sighs> okay, he's actually gonna <laughs> finally show it to us. It doesn't look like it's gonna be that big, so this. I'm gonna take this in. All right, rewind that just a second, and let's go. I can't wait. The JFK Memorial is approached up a steep path through a woodland. The pathway constructed out of 60,000 granite sets, or small cut stones, representing a huge crowd of people. There then follow 50 steps, one for States? each U.S. state, that curve wow. up the hillside through the trees to the monument itself. Thank you. The monument is a seven-ton block of Portland stone, a limestone dating from the Jurassic period. Wow. wow. This represents the weight of history that permeates the whole acre. Inscribed upon the face is a dedication to President Kennedy and an excerpt from his famous inauguration speech of 1961. Oh, no, no, we're going to look at it before we hear it. This acre of English ground was given to the United States of America. I'm going to cry. <laughs> By the people of Britain in memory. <clears throat> Take over. Of John F. Kennedy, President of the United States, died by a, an assassin's hand, 22 November 1963. Let every nation know whether it wishes us well or ill that we shall pay any price, bear, bear any, any burden. burden, meet any hardship, support any friend, or oppose opponent. any foe, in order to assure the survival and success of liberty. That is very nice. That is freaking beautiful. Mm -hmm. And I love you guys so much right now. Excerpt from his famous inauguration speech of 1961. nation know whether it wishes us well or ill that we shall pay any price bear any burden meet any hardship support any friend oppose any foe to assure the survival and the success of liberty in front what it shows how much that special relationship we have, mm -hmm. it, it just, I am feeling so much love right now. Um, 
Love, respect, honor. Yeah, yeah. and I just want to say thank you. <laughs> um, I don't know if anybody that had um, worked on that, had a hand in this in any way, um, is still with us. If anyone knows anyone who did, mm -hmm. um, that's a stretch, right, to try to find these people sometimes. But if so, you know, and they could ever hear my voice, thank you. Yes. Um, from my country, myself as well. Mm -hmm. This is so beautiful. And um, <clears throat> that just means a lot to our country in general. And God, I love our relationship. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. You can definitely feel the respect and the love that not only Queen Elizabeth, but also the whole United Kingdom yeah. has shown. Yeah. To our assassin president. So thank you. Front of the stone, the thick branch of a hawthorn tree extends over the path, forcing visitors to slightly bow down. Oh, come on. Design Seriously? In front of the stone, the thick branch of a hawthorn tree extends over the path, forcing visitors to slightly bow down. The designer of the memorial, Sir George Jellicoe, chose the hawthorn to represent Kennedy's Catholicism, and behind the hawthorn stands an American scarlet oak that turns a beautiful color in the autumn, or the fall, here. as the Americans call it, the time when the president was assassinated. Beyond the memorial block is a stone path leading to the seats of contemplation, two stone benches that give the seated a view over to where the original Magna Carta was agreed to in 1215. The memorial was unveiled in 1965 by the Queen, the Prime Minister, and Jacqueline Kennedy. The memorial and its acre of land, though belonging to the United States, is administered by the Kennedy Memorial Trust, the U.S. Ambassador being one of the trustees, and actually maintained by English Heritage. It is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and is completely free to visit. So there you are. The only piece of England that belongs to America, a beautiful and simple memorial set in the landscape where modern democracy and freedoms had their beginnings. A memorial to one of the greatest advocates of democracy and freedom in history. For in the final analysis, our most basic common link is that we all inhabit this small planet. We all breathe the same air. We all cherish our children's futures. And we are all mortal. Thank you, Mr. President. I really didn't think I could love the UK and our relationship more. And then this happens. Yeah. That is so beautiful. And um means it just means a lot. Mm -hmm. I wonder how many Americans even know about that. Uh, I have no idea. I know we didn't know about it. I mean, considering it. how much I know about JFK's life and stuff, and I didn't know that. It, yeah, that's very surprising. It's actually concerning to me. <laughs> like, why didn't I know this? But, you know, leave it to you guys. You thought of every single detail and planning out that memorial to <sighs> having the Hawthorne branch so you have to kind of bend down. That was one. Of, okay, All yes. All the stones to represent a crowd of people around every having state the bench to overlook the magna carta the 50 steps for the states i mean every detail the tree the type of tree that's up next to yeah, the memorial the oak. perfection again I, I don't know why i expect thought any differently but of course it is a beautiful well thought out well planned yeah like i said perfection you, you just nailed it so thank you thanks for taking everything away i was going to say because <laughs> you just nailed it i mean it is beautiful it is perfect it is unexpected um unexpected because i didn't know about it in that right. way um but <sighs> and definitely want to go there please let us know if you have ever been there if you've seen it in person sat there walked around anything like that it'd be interesting to know and well, like and natasha was saying earlier or even if you had a hand in designing it putting it together or know someone who did or your yeah. family did or something but it again it's not just to jfk's memory but it's it's to our relationship i'll say that again right that that signifies so much and the symbolism like debbie said of every little thing the hawthorne tree though that got me mm -hmm. that got me that still got me yes. um oh my gosh how beautiful of a gesture and and just just thinking about you know having to bow ah yeah uh, not bow, but to lower your head. I should, yes. should say that correctly. Yes. Um, but uh, it, it's just, 
it's incredible. It's just incredible. There's no mm -hmm. other word for it. And I am again, I, I, I thank you um, as an American citizen, as your cousin. Thank you for the respect shown. Yes. And I ask that you also continue that in the comments section of this video, please, because um, again, he was a very beloved president. Mm -hmm. And uh, even though for those of us that weren't here when he was president, it still matters. Absolutely, and it matters. Yeah, that is such an amazing gift. And I feel it deeply and I'm I'm just really moved right yes. now and I'm going to stop talking because I'm going to start crying again. So I just say thank you again from the bottom of my heart. Mm -hmm. And um, I know my family, if they were still with us, they would say the same back, especially those that put on uniforms. Absolutely. Um, but it's just such a beautiful, beautiful um, monument of respect. And like Debbie said, so much thought behind it, mm -hmm. which we don't expect anything less. Absolutely. <laughs> um, thank you guys so much for watching. Please hit the like button, consider subscribing to the channel. And, um, you know, we'd love to hear from you. Like Debbie said, if you've been, et cetera, you know, what, mm -hmm. any more information would be great. So um, we will see you on the next episode. And now that will be on Sun on Sunday, on a Wednesday, which will be that 60th anniversary. Yes. But that will be a video for Sweden. Mm -hmm. um, we wanted to make this one today uh, in light of Wednesday. So uh, please right. share this with your social media. Uh, we'd ask you to, especially on this one. Yes, this definitely. is This is something I think everyone needs to know about mm -hmm. for both countries. It's too important not to. And again, just thank you. Always love life jazz. And be as strong as Tyson. Bye, guys. Bye.